All right, so today we're gonna to be learning how to use this manual mill. This is the mill we have in our machine shop down in Brown, and it's a pretty awesome machine. And this is how you're gonna use it. So this mill has three axes. It has this handle, which moves the table left and right, and counterclockwise moves the table towards you, and clockwise moves it away from you. This handle moves the table forwards and backwards relative to the operator, which stands pretty much right here. It also has a Z axis, which raises and lowers the table. Um, this is the joint, the knee joint, which attaches to that axis like so. And the up direction is marked on here. So clockwise raises the table like so. And when I'm done using this, if it's going to get in my way or anything, I like to flip it around and put it on like so, so I can't kick it or mess with it, so I have a good clean cut. Moving on to other operations, the on and off switch is right here. There's currently nothing in this bit in the chuck. Um, we can put any type of tool into this machine that'll fit into the, the collets. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to load one of those into the machine. I'm gonna be loading this edge finder to show how to find the very edge of a part for zeroing it. We have these collets, like I said. Um, each one has a different diameter. We have big, small. Each of them should be marked with the uh, correct size that it is. This is a 3 16 inch collet, and this is my 3 16 inch uh, edge finder. So I'll put it in like so. Should be a press fit, um, pretty snug already. And then what happens is there's a keyway on these collets, which finds a key in the chuck. I'll go ahead and press the collet all the way up against the machine, and this shaft right here screws into the threads which are on the back of these collets. So I'll hand tighten that first with my hand kept on the collet to make sure that it doesn't fall out so it doesn't damage the bit or maybe if I had a part in there it damaged the part. I can grab this wrench which is back here tightening. Try to get it nice and snug get it some taps but not too tight that you can't take it out again if you need to. Put that back. Right now, the machine has a brake on, which is on this side over here. There's an in position and an out position. The in position means the brake is on, meaning that I can't turn this. So I'll move the lever to out by pulling out this black pin. And now this machine is free to move. So to use this, I'm going to be putting in a part into my vise. So this is the vise which holds anything that I'll be working on, anything I need to be holding while I'm cutting it with this, uh, this tool. So over here, I've prepared what I need to clamp my part into the vise. This is the material that we'll be working with today high density polyethylene. I've went ahead and faced this side so it's nice and smooth so that this edge finder will find a nice flat edge. So we can go ahead and make a cut. I'm using these parallels. They come in pairs, totally parallel, hence the name. And I'll be using them as spacers for these grips today. So with this, I can open and close the vise. So open it, put my parallels in, drop my little grips in there. And then I can go ahead and put in my part. When setting in um, my stock part that I'm using, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in so it's like hanging out a couple inches 
I'm actually going to be facing this side of it about an inch deep um, just as an example cut so I'll put this in there leaving whatever I'm going to be cutting the area I'll be cutting hanging out of the vise so that I definitely won't run into the vise with my tool which would damage the vise and it would damage the tool and I don't want that to happen so go ahead and tight that, tighten that in there same thing nice and tight this material is kind of soft so I'm not going to really crank it in there but just so that it won't move and I can go ahead and turn on this edge finder and find that edge so the on switch is up here I'm using the forward direction I'll double check make sure my brake is off that would make a horrible screeching noise if I were to leave that on so I'll leave that off go ahead and turn this on and basically just butt this up against the side of this face So I'll bring the part up against my edge finder and I'll watch it. It has a movable end at the bottom and as I bring it up and butt it up against that face it'll slow down its shimmying until it's pretty much perfectly centered and then I know it's centered once the center actually breaks off like so. So you'll see that the edge finding bottom has actually moved away from the center. That's how I know that I'm right on that edge. So I'm going to zero that point. Each of these dials has different um, indicator scale as to your position. It's in thousands of an inch. So each tick mark is one thousandth of an inch. I'll loosen that up. Set that point. So I know where that is again, and I can find it again. Move it away, turn it off. So now that I've found that zero, I want to check it again and make sure that I actually have that at that zero point. So I'll lower the table. And move this over. Both of these sides of the table have dials. But I use this one, so I'll go up to this guy and bring that to my zero point, which is right there. So what I've found is the exact center of any tool that I'll be putting in here. So I can go ahead, change this one out for the tool that I'll be cutting with, and then I'll be able to make my cut, which will be a depth of one inch uh, into the part and cutting down about a quarter of an inch. So I'll move this away. I'll make sure the brake is on, which makes loosening the bit much easier. Put this back undo it. If the collet gets stuck in there, I'll actually keep this threaded and actually give it a little bit of a tap, which knocks it out of place without damaging the threads too much. So I'll unscrew this the rest of the way. Um, take this out, put these back where I found them. On this mill, there's a nice holder for all the collets and they each have a space, so make sure that they go back to where you found them. For the cut, I'll be using a half inch end mill. This particular tool has two flutes, which is suitable for cutting the soft material. If it were steel or aluminum, uh, you might want to think about having more flutes 
but you can learn about that in feeds and speeds and manufacturing processes. Same thing, there's a keyway. I'll line it up with my key. Inside, just spin it around, and there we go. Push it up, tighten this all the way down. Not too tight. Make sure my brake comes off. So this is free spinning and I'm good to go. So now I have to find the very top of this part so that I can know exactly how deep I'm gonna go. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'll line up the bit with the very center of my part. This can be found using the edge finder as well to find the outer radius and then move that distance to the very center or you can kind of just see it with your eyes. So I'm lining it up. I'm also spinning the tool, the bit, so that those two flutes that I was talking about line up with the center line of this material. That's because um, those two flutes at the very bottom that's where like the deepest part of the tool is and that's what I want to zero against the top of this. So I get this sheet of paper which I know is about uh, three thousandths of an inch or 0 .003 inches and I'm going to put that between the tool and the part. This serves to kind of have a physical barrier so I don't scratch uh, my part or anything like that and it works pretty well for zeroing stuff like this. So double check that I'm at the zero point, put my paper between the tool and the part and raise my part basically and I'll be shaking this a little bit until um, the tool grabs the paper. So right there, if I were to move that any more, I would actually be ripping the paper and I don't want to do that. So that's how I know that the tool is right on top of the part. So on this knob, I'm going to go ahead, unscrew the handle, move this to zero. And remember, we have a thickness of three thousandths of an inch of this piece of paper. So I'm actually going to offset that from my zero. So I'll set it to about like a, like a negative three, you can kind of think about it. So that when I bring this handle up, those three thousandths, this tool is exactly on the very top of my part. So I'll go ahead and tighten that. And then I'll lower my part down. So just like I did with the edge finder, I'm gonna bring everything to my zero point, make sure that looks good to me, and then I can make my cut. So I'll take this to my zero. Another important thing about um, using these machines for precision machining, um, each of these knobs has a little bit of play in it, meaning that on this handle there's about 20 thousandths of an inch that on the knob you can see moving, but it's not physically moving the table. So what that means is whenever I'm going back to my zero point, I have to come at it the same direction that I zeroed it. So I move my part up against the edge finder this way. So that's the way I'm going to be finding that zero. So do to my zero. Looks pretty good to me. So that's zeroed. I'll move this a little bit out of the way. Check my Z. And that looks good to me. So I'm uh, happy with my zeros. I can go ahead and drop my tool down to the depth that I'll be cutting and walk it through the part or I'll actually be bringing the part through the blade, kind of like a lawnmower pattern to remove all the material and have a nice um, flat face. So I'll move the part out of the way of the tool 
And from that zero point, I'm gonna be raising it a quarter of an inch or 250 thousandths. Just to kind of show you guys a cut. One turn on this wheel is 100 thousandths. So I'm gonna be doing two and a half turns. This should end where it reads 50. So that's set. I'll bring this back to my zero, which means I'll actually be cutting into this part with the radius of my bit, which is another quarter of an inch, which is important to know. Okay, so cool. Move it again, 200 thousandths. Cool. It's kind of confusing sometimes looking at this end and going to your zero. I actually didn't go far enough again. So I'll take it back to my zero. And that should be right on. Looks good to me. I can go ahead and turn the machine on forward direction and start making my cut. The way I'm gonna do that is with the machine on, I'm gonna walk the part into the blade, and then when I'm, con when I'm done with that face, I'll move this another 250 thousandths, so I'm cutting with like an even um, depth, so each time it's an even cut, and I'll remember where I am and how far I've gone. So I'll make four passes of quarter of an inch each time, uh, ending up with, should be almost exactly one inch from the very top front face of this, to the where I stop at a depth of a quarter of an inch. So I'll go ahead and do that. Take this off, flip it around so I don't mess with it. And we can go ahead and make our cut. So I'm done with my cut. I'll go ahead, turn off the machine. There's a handbrake right, right here. Pulling that stops the blade. And so with this stopped, I'll go ahead and remove the part, dust off my, my tabletop, and make sure that this is exactly how I want it. Um, it's actually important to leave it in the vise uh, before you're done with it. Measure it a couple times, make sure that it's exactly where you want it. And then once you're convinced with your, your cut, you can take it out and go on to the next part or whatever. So I'll use this, loosen the vise, and just slide my part out. Good to go. On every station in this machine shop, there should be brushes like so, which are used just to clean off the table. This is important just to keep like a clean shop and to be courteous to the people who are after you. Um, also, if I were to have be cutting aluminum or something, something harder, and they were to be underneath my parallels when I set my part down, that means that my tool or my piece would actually be at an angle and I wouldn't be cutting perfectly flush with this table. So that's important for several reasons. So when you're done with that, cleaning the table, make sure you put everything back where you found it. I'll return these to that tabletop over there, put the parallels back. Any tools that were on the table, I'll leave them there and just try to leave it like even better than when I found it. <laughs> 